are back. All right. So we took probably about a half hour break. Uh, I had to charge some batteries and move that video file over. So we're here with, I guess, technically episode two of the Games of Thrones video podcast. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be playing a game of Fantasy Flight Games, living card game, Game of Thrones. Uh, in the previous episode, I broke in. Oof, she totally just, just, just kicked the camera. The camera so <laughs> sorry, everybody. Try not to have seizures. Um, I just know if we shuffle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. By the way, we're Canadian. <laughs> we're drinking Tim Horton's coffee during this video podcast. So, Tim Hortons, if you'd like to give us a couple bucks here for the free advertising, that would be great. I'd be uh, all for it. I'm going to say A a lot, and he's going to laugh a lot and <laughs> yeah. not say much. Yeah. So, uh, we are playing House Stark versus House Greyjoy, and the House Greyjoy deck has the House of Dreams uh, agenda attached to it, and his House of Dreams is putting Longship Iron Victory into play. Now, Clay, could you read for us what Longship Iron Victory does? Alright, so it's a two-cost location. Uh, warship at the end of your marshaling phase. At the end of the marshaling phase, kneel each warship location you control if you do not control a Greyjoy character. Uh, challenges. Kneel Longship Iron Victory to choose a participating character until the end of that challenge. So that character gets plus two strength, and if you wish, win that challenge, draw a card. Oh my god, it's so stupid. Mm -hmm. Um... Now, my deck is themed more or less around Warcrest characters. There's a lot of armies in my deck. There's a lot of events that murder Islanders. Here's hoping I have enough saves. And, yes, the Greyjoy uh, house theme is not dying, because that which is dead may never die. Mm -hmm. Or something like that. The great are stupid, and I don't like them. We do not sew. They have no penises, sir. We do not sew. They yeah. have no penises. <laughs> Ramsey and the sausage. Oh, my yes. God. Okay, so <laughs> we are going to start with setup. That's the first part of the game. So I'm going to draw seven cards. Clay's going to draw six cards. I'm going to be able to face down, put five gold worth of cards into play after I mulligan, because this is garbage. Oh, Actually, my God. Is that bad? No, this is actually not that bad. I can keep this. It's the worst. It's the best three-card setup I think I can get. Yeah, that'll do, actually. That'll do, pig. That'll do. All right, so I'm going to keep. And then Clay gets to use three gold in order to play his setup because House of Dreams gives him some gold for free when he plays the location. So is Clay keeping his hand? Is Clay dropping five cards? Uh -huh. With three gold. Clayton <laughs> is a cheater. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now we... Me not, me not shuffling while you're talking has probably turned into a bad thing. We reveal our setups. I think I'm losing this game already. I'm going to reveal the Bastards Elite, Arya Stark, and Northern Fiefdoms. I have four locations out of five in my hand. You're the greatest, sir. Is the other one another gatehouse? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so um, my cards, I'm just going to break them down quickly. The Bastard's Elite is two gold for four strength with a military and power icons. It has a war crest. It has the text, Army, House Bolton, no attachments except weapons. Here, I'll put it over here. After a player wins a military challenge against me, that player takes control of the Bastard's Elite. The goal is that no one will be winning military challenges against me. However... He's got a dude that's going to suck for me. I also have Arya Stark. Very famous. This is a later version of Arya Stark. This one is two gold for two strength with intrigue and power icons. She has the lady trait. She has the deadly keyword, which we'll get into oh, excuse me, later. It has a bit of extra complexity to it. And then she has a response. After unique Stark character is killed, discard Arya Stark from play, cannot be saved, to choose and kill a character with strength three or less. So she's... she's very vengeful. And then I have a location. Uh, it is limited, one gold. During the marshalling phase, kneel northern fiefdoms to lower the cost of the next Stark card I play this phase by one. 
And I can also kneel it to pre create one influence, which can be used for various effects, but I don't think this deck really uses influence that much. Clay, how about you talk about your cards? One little thing I just realized I should have read my cards beforehand. Windu the top triggers. Windu what? Windu the first text box triggers. When you play them. Why? What do you play? Well, no, don't, 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 don't worry about that guy. Let me see. There might be a thing. If you do not control at least one Grey Droid character, this guy. Yeah. Yeah. You're the worst. I am terrible. Woo! Again, again, I am absolutely terrible at Grey Joy. Value. So. I'm winning already. Yeah. Okay. I am terrible. Anyways, I have a Carrion Bird. Um, stealth. One red. Uh. <laughs> You're the best at this. It's so bad. Uh. What did you do? You covered right over the card completely? Yeah, yeah. It costs a gold and it has one strength and a military icon. Mm -hmm. So it has the traits Raven Creature, which will come into play, I'm sure. Yeah. It has the stealth keyword, which basically allows it to bypass another character during a challenge. It sneaks by them because ravens are super stealthy, right? Flying, caca, you know, super stealthy. <laughs> And then it has a response, and how about you read that response? Alright, so the response is, after you win a challenge in which the carrion bird participated, shuffle any number of raven cards from your discard pile, or one card with a printed raven trait from play, back into their owner's decks, cannot be cancelled. So, the, the, a little theme inside of my deck is ravens as well as uh, the warships, so this guy just keeps the ravens in my deck, and not off the board. Uh, I have three locations. Uh, first is Shadow Black Lane. It's a zero cost, unaligned. Uh, keyword Westeros, and it's limit one per deck, but it's not limited, so it I can play it and limited cards. Uh, Marshalling, Neil Shadow Black Lane to lower the cost of the next character with an Intrigue, the green icon. Uh, this You play this phase by one. Uh, second is uh, a limited card, is a zero cost Greyjoy card, the Gatehouse. It is uh, Iron Islands, and it just gives me one extra gold during Marshalling. Uh, last is the Iron Cliffs. It is a one cost. Uh, Iron Islands, after you, uh, Iron Cliffs comes into play, place two gold tokens from the treasury on it. Response, discard a gold token from the Iron Cliffs from play to save a great joy character from being killed. So hopefully... And how about you tell the audience why you discarded that other card? Uh, so finally, the last one is I realize is I'm an idiot. Yep. Uh, is a Naval Escort, is a warship card, is one gold cost and it's great joy. And the very first thing on the text box says, if you do not control at least one Greyjoy character, discard Naval Escort from play. So, right there. I am hilarious. Now, it's important to note and that the idiot. shield on Carrion Bird is blank, which means this is a neutral character and not a Greyjoy character. If this had had a little octopus on it, then he would have been fine and not garbage, but instead, he's Clayton. It's Kraken, sir. It's a Kraken, not an octopus. No. Kraken. A Kraken is upside down, sir. That is an octopus. Fine, then. All right. So we have done our setup. Um, oh, and then we uh, draw back up to oh. seven cards once your setup is complete. So I drew some cards. I need to now let you know about the limited keyword. Limited is a keyword that provides you with safe locations, they often can't be targeted, but you can only play one limited card of any type per turn. So my location is limited, his gatehouse is also limited, which means that if he had another limited location in his hand, he wouldn't have been able to play both of them during the setup phase, but he'll be able to play the next one during his marshal. Um, we've drawn our cards back up to seven, so now we go into the first round and we go into the plot phase. So I have a plan. My deck has a purpose. I'm feeling really good about it, and this is going to lose me the game. <laughs> Are you ready to plot search? <laughs> yep. Summoning season. Ravens. <laughs> Let's read our cards. Mine is a four gold, three initiative, one claim. Where's the card? Uh, that has a win revealed effect. Whereas Clayton's is a 4 2 1, also with a win revealed effect. Um, neither of us have anything that manipulates initiative, so I win initiative 3 to 2. So I'm going to say, Clayton, how about you go first, sir? 
Alright, so, uh, Time of Ravens. Uh, when revealed, search your deck for a Raven card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. So I'm going to uh, go looking for a Raven card. It's now, while he's doing this, he's already searching his deck, so let's resolve my when revealed as well. When revealed, choose an opponent. I'm going to begrudgingly choose Clayton. Then you and that opponent must each search your decks for a character, reveal it, put it into your hands, then shuffle your decks. So, just makes sense, he's already searching his deck, might as well just let him search for two things instead of one, because I'm such a nice guy. Uh, I played this summoning season because my deck specifically wants one character, and if it can get it, then it's able to do a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I'm going to reveal that character and I'll show you the card because it's a pretty complicated card. Just making sure there's nothing else out here that I'd rather have, but no, there really isn't. So I'm fetching the Kindly Man. And Clayton shakes his head in disgust because Clayton now understands where my deck is going. Uh, I'm going to grab Maester Windermere. Oh, aren't you special? Okay, I'm going to hold up the Kindly Man to the audience, and then I'll break the card down a little bit, and we'll see what it can do. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that we can get a bit of legibility here. All right, the Kindly Man is a two-cost, one-strength ally character. <clears throat> House Stark only, deadly. It has all three icons and a holy crest. None of that stuff matters at all, trust me. If the Kindly Man would be killed... Instead, attach him to your house card as your only agenda with the text. Response. After you win... Oh, is the glare okay? No, the glare's okay. After you win an intrigue or power challenge, choose a non-unique character in any dead or discard pile, put it into play under your control. At the end of the phase, discard that character if it's still in play. Limit once per phase. So this guy is pretty much just a recursion engine. So Clay grabbed a white raven card, which is an attachment that's going to go on his house card and make it winter because he's a poop head. Mm -hmm. And he's going to make it so that I can't play all of my awesome cards whenever I want to. And he also got Ma Maester Wendemir, who is a unique Greyjoy character that can save Greyjoy characters from being killed. So we put those cards into our hands and we have plotted, so now we draw. Uh, I wish I hadn't given the first turn now. Oh no, it's okay. I can still do both. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Uh, so during marshalling, you take a number of gold coins from the center, put them into your gold pool, equal to your plot, plus any modifiers you may have, such as the gatehouse. So he takes four gold and one gold to make five gold, put it into his gold pool, and then he gets to play all of his really fancy gray joy cards. So I'm going to spend gold. We'll play Samuel Tarly. Oh, God. I'm going to spend gold to play the White Raven. And, and draw okay, two Samuel cards. Tarly has a response. After a Raven card is played, draw two cards. It's very important to note that in Game of Thrones, there is a draw cap. You draw two cards at the start of the turn, and then for the remainder of the turn, you can draw as many as three additional cards. No more than that. Unfortunately for me... This dude is already going to get his draw cap on the first turn of the game. This is not great. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, remember, you count one less gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. White Raven makes it winter. When it's winter, according to the White Raven, each player counts one fewer gold during the start of their marshalling. So it means I'm going to get four gold, but I'm only going to get three because of the White Raven. Because someone's a dick. Uh, on the other three, I'm going to grab uh, Wintertime Marauders. Mm -hmm. And Wintertime Marauders is a character oh. card. Did that wrong. Three gold, three... What did you do wrong? Uh, I still need gold pool to put zero cost down. Ha <laughs> ha, he sucks. So, it's true, actually. In Game of Thrones, once you're out of gold, you can no longer... Play, a ta play during marshalling cards with gold costs, even if the gold cost is zero. You can play events still, 
but you can't actually lay cards onto the table. So these Wintertime Marauders, they are excellent card. If it is summer and you reveal a plot card, kneel Wintertime Marauders. Well, it's not summer, so he's in luck. Response. If it is winter and you win a challenge in which Wintertime Marauders is participating, choose and discard a non-unique card from play. Mm -hmm. uh, Warcrest, military and power icons. Such a <laughs> powerful card. I am already feeling as though I'm in trouble. Okay, so Clay has finished his marshalling. So I'm going to get my three gold because I'm a fancy boy. I'm going to play a narrow sea. I'm going to play a great keep. These are both zero cost locations. The great keep generates a gold during marshalling. The narrow sea has a discard effect. I can get rid of it in order to reduce the cost of a character by two. So I'm going to use the narrow sea in order to put the kindly man into play for free, reducing its cost by two, so reducing it to zero. And then I'm going to make everybody super happy and play a House Umber Berserkers. House Umber Berserkers is a Stark Army House Umber, four gold, four strength, military power icons. When House Umber Berserkers comes into play, each player must choose a character he or she controls, kill each chosen character. Come at me, bro. I'm going to nominate the Kindly Man for Death. How would you like to proceed? Uh, so does each choose a character, I guess? Each chooses a character he or she controls. Yeah, I guess I'm going to kill the Carrion Bird. That's fantastic. So, the Kindly Man, it has a killed ability, so it gets attached to my house card as my agenda. Arya Stark has a response. After a unique Stark character is killed, I can discard it from play to choose and kill a character with strength three or less. I'm going to discard Arya Stark from play to kill the Wintertime Marauders. Now, we're putting cards in different piles. Clay is putting his cards that are killed into uh, his dead pile. These represent cards that are dead. Can you see the dead pile? This is hilariously zoomed in. Oh, shit! I forgot to zoom it out. Well, that's good. Awesome. I'm failing at zooming this out. Come on. There we I go. Can be better at cameras. Can you see the dead pile? Yeah, you can see the dead pile now. Okay. There. All right, so all the stuff that I was just describing, thank goodness I was describing it, <laughs> because it all happened and you couldn't see it. <laughs> yes. Uh, so discard, okay. dead pile. So the discard pile are just cards that are discarded from play. They can often be reused in some way. Characters in the dead pile, in the discard pile, don't count as dead, so you can continue to play copies of them. They just represent being gone away from the field of battle for some time. Dead characters, if they are unique, they tend to be um, dead. Like let's say Eddard Stark dead. Um, you can no longer play copies of those cards from play as long as a copy remains in the dead pile. Uh, unique, right? You did say unique, unique ones, you yes. You say unique. I, I um, don't remember. Clay is going to put his in two distinct piles. Discard will be closest to him. Dead will be further away. I'm going to state that mine um, will be... Uh, my dead cards will be horizontal in my pile. That's just the way that I've been raised to play the game. I am so, an idiot. Yes, we I know. You're the worst. Are we still at the set where they died? No, they're, they're already dead. You're dick. They're already dead. I, lo I, I love how... I love how I'm describing your dead pile. The <laughs> yes. card is in your dead, dead pile. And I realized that I have a save you sitting have a save in front of me. sitting right there, yeah. Oh my god. Plays awesome. I am, I am the greatest player of this game He's in the world. the greatest. After which, I'll play a deck that I'm used to and we'll actually... We'll actually I'll have a competitive game. Actually have game. a competitive game. I, yeah. I feel retardedly stupid right now. Clay gets to... Clay apologizes for using the word retard there. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't mean to say it as... Um, it's fine. The internet doesn't really care about that kind of thing. They're not super picky about stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we now go into <laughs> challenges since we've both marshaled all of the cards we can. Mm -hmm. So, Clay, if you would like to marshal some cards... Or, uh, challenge. Sorry, do you have any challenges? I have no challenges to declare. I do not <laughs> have any icons. icons. Um, so, Clay passes on challenges. So, I'm going to declare a challenge. Challenge. I am going to... Man, I really wish that I had more gold. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to declare a military challenge with my Bastards Elite. They are going to... Uh, go into the red zone 
and Clay is going to cry a little bit because he can't defend the challenge. I, I will declare no defenders. Great. So I have first opportunity to play effects. I'm going to not play any event cards. Clay, do you have any event cards that you'd like to play? I do not. Then we are going to go to the resolution of the challenge. I win four to zero. It is an unopposed challenge. So the first unopposed challenge you win each turn. No, each unopposed challenge. Each unopposed you win. turn. You are not Tyler. Yeah. Right. I'm. <laughs> we don't speak ill of the dead. Uh, you win an, a power chip for winning an unopposed challenge. Now, because I win a military challenge, Clayton has to pay claim of one by sacrificing killing off a character of his choice. Bye, Sam. Mm-hmm. Goodbye, Fatso. Bye, Fatso. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to... Do you have anything in your discard pile? Oh, uh, you yes. do have a guy in your dead pile, don't you? I do have guys in my dead pile. Oh, do you have anybody with an intrigue icon? Uh, no. Oh, that's a shame. Intrigue icon. Intrigue icon. Yeah, they're not there yet. Okay. Well, then I'm just going to power challenge you. Bam! Okay. I declare no defenders. I'm Take going to win an unopposed challenge, power challenge. And then I win the challenge with a claim of one, so I can take a power chip from Clayton's house card, which he sadly doesn't have. And if he did, I would be able to put it onto my house card. So I'm currently leading at the end of challenges round one, two to one. Oh, I have a response. I'm going to respond. So it's a non-unique. You got a, you got winner time rogers there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. want my winner time rogers? Yeah, I, okay. yeah. Take it. Then. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And at the end of the phase, he goes back. You're a jerk. Okay, and nobody wins dominance because neither of us have any uh, cards standing or gold remaining in our gold pool. So we go then to standing. I'll stand my two characters and my location. Mm -hmm. We'll tax. Nobody taxes because nobody has any gold. And then we go to the next round. I'm going to just make sure. Of uh, things like oh we have seven minutes okay so we can do the second round pretty quick then mm -hmm. I'm going to go there I think yeah I think so yeah that'll yeah. be okay so now we're gonna plot I reveal must of the realm I reveal Torrin Square. Okay, uh, he wins initiative at four to my two, so you choose first play. I will go first. Okay, let's read your plot before right. anything. Military Battle City is the plot. Oh, it's a, a three gold, four initiative, one claim. It's a military battle city or its keywords. If you have no other city plots used in your pile, raise the claim value on your revealed plot card by one during military challenges. So my during military challenges this round, my claim is two. Yup. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Okay, so mine says players cannot initiate military challenges unless they control an army character. Yep. Mine generates five gold, two initiative, and one claim. So we have uh, plotted, let's draw. Mm -hmm. Wicked sick, yo. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I really wish I had a roll. Okay. That's okay, I top decked like a boss. Like a boss. Like a boss. Cry deeply like a mouse. Mm -hmm. All right, so Clay is going to grab his gold. He gets three plus one minus one, so three gold total, and then he can play some cards mm -hmm. and maybe not screw it up this time. Yeah, maybe not screw it up this time. All right, uh, so zero cost. I have a river blockade, which cancels the first location effect triggered by an opponent each round. Damn it. Um, okay. I have uh, another save that I will try to remember this round. No. On iron, iron mines, and a sunset sea. Let me see. Where are the keywords? You don't have any. You just have the one limited, right? Okay. Good. Yep. Good. 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 <laughs>